to either side of anyone right now. For RNG, do you look for the safe oh. weak side? Yep, you do. They're not looking for the Shaohu carry anymore. This is the eggs in the Gala basket. Yeah, this is all in a bot side. The last time we saw them play this, though, was against JDG. It didn't look good. Where they got 2 old. <laughs> it did not look good. <laughs> and it's it not Scion. It's not. <laughs> so I appreciate that. He, yeah. can, he can be the engaged without putting himself into a bad position. That's all I'm saying for Xiaohu. Yeah, it's also the first time, I believe, that we're actually seeing Xiaohu bring out this Orn. Yeah, he yeah. brought out the, like, the Malphite and the Scion and stuff. So haven't seen the Orn. Let's see how it goes. But Nuggery definitely in a commanding position on this Renekton in the early stages. But as we get to the late game, like the double whammy between the Orn ult and that Seraphine ult enables the Udyr and this Kai'Sa so incredibly well. Whereas when we looked at the opposite side, you're still looking to um, to have a strong mid game coming through with LWX on this Tristana, using the Karma in the mid to try and counteract a lot of what Seraphine does in those early stages and still having um, a super strong jungler coming through from TM. Well, the compositions are locked and loaded. We are loading onto the rip for what could be the final time today. RNG fighting for their series lives. They, of course, still have the loser's bracket should they fall right now, but FBX riding that high. You can see Doon be there, getting himself pumped yeah. up, really feeling the momentum. And for FBX to come out with a 3-0 here, we got to start reevaluating our predictions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, this is insane from FPX. They have looked so good all series long. Tien now back onto his most comfortable champ, the strongest jungler in the game right now. And he's going up against Wei on this Udyr. This Hecarim pick signifies it all here for me. If TN can get rolling, start making these picks happen with this Karma, FPX, they snowball out of control in classic FPX fashion. See if they're able to get that snowball again. Let the Jios go! No FBX Jios, only RNG. They are, of course, an incredibly popular organization throughout China and the world, realistically. And uh, we're going to have to see them uh, kind of really come out now and make some kind of a difference. This is going to be all on Gala. It's going to be all on Wei as well to make sure that his lanes, like we said in the last game, aren't just multiple different fires that he can't kind of, you know, that he's stretching himself too thin over. Yeah, this is so. We are, we've been talking a lot about FPX mis mixing up their strategy, right? And it's been working obviously incredibly well against RNG. This is now RNG mixing up their strategy. Just saying, look, we haven't been able to play through Xiaohu in this top side. We haven't been able to get control there. So instead, we're going to try and power through Wei and Cryon. Like, this 1-2 combo between the Seraphine and the Udyr is so incredibly strong. Maybe they can try and make some plays on towards Doombi in the early stages of the game. Turn that pressure into bot lane plays at level 6. Well, we can see there the grand Ooh, Gala. entrance. Gala taking a bigger chunk than LWX. And that's kind of the difference here is that... If Gala can get the, you know, the, the four stacks of his passive off, he will probably win the trade. But you automatically win the trade if you're LWX, because the Tristana bomb is just going to do more, just cause straight up because it does guarantee damage. Yeah, as, a, if, as Gala in these early stages, you really want to try and isolate LWX. If you can get the full blast of your, uh, your Q off, you're going to do a lot of damage and a lot of bursts very quickly. But you can see there that if LWX is able to get the bomb off and trade effectively, he's in a much better position. I want to take a look, though, at these um, junglers, right? because Tien has actually gone right. Top side, Nuggery, you're on your own. I'm actually going to path from top to bot and make sure that I can try and play through uh, LWX and Crisp and try and shut down Gala in this early game. We've already said that Gala's the main win condition here on this Kai'Sa. So Tien is just like, cool, let's just try and make sure he's not having a fun time. Yeah, honestly, it's such a smart adaptation. You know the Renekton's not really going to be in any threat. Even if the Udyr did pop himself up, he's pretty safe even with his flash available to him. So just covering the bot side in case Wei does try to get a little sneaky-deaky towards these bot lane duos. And right now you can see just everyone is kind of playing respectfully. No one really knowing exactly where everyone is right now. Yeah, and the big difference here for the FPX bot lane is the biscuit. You can actually see Gala's opted in towards the Inspiration Tree. It's given him the extra Biscuits, which he's able to trade super heavily and then still be fine. But now, way level four, pathing over towards the Scuttle. Gala and Mink looking to join. Looking to join, but you can see in mid lane there, it was actually crying straight away, just going, I'm roaming. I don't care if the, wa the wave's in a bad position. I don't care if I lose CS because 
As Seraphine mid, that's not your job. Your job is not to get up and, you know, to these kind of crazy CS numbers, as we can see Tien moving up towards this mid lane, gonna go pathing through that to get the top side scuttle. But back to my point, Seraphine is not there to be this monstrous carry. She's there to facilitate. You want to hit the two items and then be at that point looking towards your AD carry or your top laner to es carry. Especially with how much how cheap your items are in the Moonstone and also then going towards Merlin Omicron. The thing is here though, Doombi matches that, right? Doombi, because you're on Karma, he's gonna be going a very similar build very similar things when it comes to the, the non-ultimate abilities, but obviously Cry and lending himself towards the team fight pressure that RNG can bring. But you can answer that as well with Doombi here. I think when you pair this Karma and Hecarim, the pick potential that you have goes sky high. And even that's not adding like the Reverie Battle Song that'll be coming through from Chris. This pony, it's gonna be quick. Pony is jumping in, they jump straight onto LWX. One more auto attack, the Ignite is ticking. Oh, Chris. But Chris, knowing that he might have seen his AD carry go down, flashes over, gets him away. That is almost all summoners gone, just a heal for Gala and Ignite for Chris. But you can see already RNG, they want this bot lane to work. Well, I mean, it's the fact that Gala and Ming are just heavily winning through their own presence in the lane. Chris forced to say, get down, Mr. Presence, as he flashes in front of the missile, but Way now, looking to train against Tien. Getting a bit of damage here. Needs to be careful though. The oh, TP bot. bot lane coming in from Nuggery. And they're going to try and chase this one down. There's no flashes here as Chris stayed around. Nuggery going to be the benefactor to all of these kills if he's able to get on top of them. The attract repel is enough. Ming, we salute you for your service, sir. He puts himself in harm's way and gets himself killed to Wei, save his AD doing? carry. Wei, however, has to flash away. But Tien is still able to pick up that kill. Wei being way too far forward. I mean, Crying didn't go with them. I mean, look at where the wave is. Crying has been freezing this for such a long time, and Wade decides, hey, look, I'm going to go for this invade, but it buys time for Doombi to come across. Tien survives, and because you're not going ghost for ghost, Tien just opens up the distance. And that's a massive mistake coming through from Wei, and now kills for Nuggery on this bottom side as well. Not the start you're hoping for for RNG. No, not really. And again, we talk about explosive kind of setups as LWX perfectly buffers the crash down, but talk about early game explosive setups here for FBX. When they get these advantages, they generally don't let go. And this is, this is honestly just such a smart play from Nuggery realizing, oh cool, they're still here. They're greeting for this play. And he's just shoved in top lane as well, right? So it's not like Xiao Hu's going to be able to push out this wave. Xiao Hu's actually completely out of mana as well. So he, you're able to just pick this up for free as Nuggery, reset, and yes, you will lose some CS on that top side, but the difference is marginal, especially when you're looking at the 10 CS lead that Nuggery already has. Yeah, it's it, it, it goes from it goes to a 10 CS lead to what could have been a 20 CS lead. It's not really that big of a deal, as you can see now with that wave pushed in. He still gets himself a plate. As a Shahu doing relatively all right into this lane, but with the dragon down to about 1,000 HP, Wei needs to back away. This might just be given over. He can't contest this. Never mind. They're gonna go straight in for it. The ignite, or the, sorry, the smite comes down. They drop down the iron core. Tien will sacrifice his life. Doing B gets flashed on and gets crashed down. He's not where to go. He's just been CC'd for days. Two quick kills, but FBX did pick himself up the dragon. Yeah, this is where you kind of go, damn, I need Merc threads real bad, but he actually goes towards the Ionian. I, I, I still think, though, like, this as FPX was a bit of an overextension. I thought they'd be able to get the dragon bursted and get the hell out of dodge. But because Xiaohu willing to invest that TP, he's like, look, we need to start getting some wins on the map. I don't care if I lose that heavily in this top side. I need to make things right on this bottom side of the map. Well, Nuggery going to find himself away in the jungle as uh, he's just going to try and be a nuisance with that priority you talked about in this top side. Way not really in a position to contest this. Seraphine had already reset. You can have the Hecarim with the top side as well. But Nuggery says, you know what? I don't want this camp. I want your camp as he pushes himself forward. But now Tien is here. They're just bullying out Way right now. Yeah, Doombi's able to roam across. Crying's got to go collect that mid wave. So they can't actually contend this. And again, this is Tien playing so well off of his lane states. Getting in, invading. Now, yes, it was Nuggery who led the charge on this one, but you can see a very different style of FPX. It's trying to shut down Way and watching RNG crumble from that focal point. So very, very early on in the game. It is only about a three, 400 goal lead. Again, nothing too spectacular. You will have the extra little bit of utility with someone like an Orn in the later game. But we talked about the crypto versus the stocks, the nest egg versus the instant buyout. As we wait to see now where the RNG and T FBX are willing to fight over this one. It's a 4v4 as Crisp now joins the fray. 
Uh, but you also got Elden Rex coming up. This is not going to uh, turn out pretty for it. RNG, and they realize that. Like, this is. FEX, like, knew this whole time that because of the pressure they had topside, Tien's going to be free to take this. Xiao Hu can't do anything. No ult, no flash, no anything to try and turn this around. So, FEX powered through this early game. And again, RNG are just not part of this game right now. Wei hasn't had any impact top. He's lost all of his farm on that top side of the map. He's not able to get an impact in this bottom lane either. And FTX are free to do what they want. Got themselves a rift. Did steal away the dragon as well. So it's the two neutrals that we generally see at the start of the game being taken in favor of FBX. And again, there is still Gala. Gala is still 20 or 10 CS ahead of you know uh, this bot lane and is still pushing in with the priority. Yeah, but this is where they need to lead. You can see Ming and Gala, they're like, right, we need to get this farm bot side or Wei's just out of the game. So cry and move it in, but Gala, like this, I think they just need to full invade on bot side. Like they actually have the they first pressure. He's playing bouncer. They, he literally can't yeah, walk but I in think on it. You just fight us, right? Ming has ult. You just walk straight up. You can then force the uh, the flash or at least doom be back. You go in. You steal away all the camps. Like that's where you can try and find these advantages. Right now, though, you're just slow bleeding out as RNG. Tian now, look at this. Yes, advantage. He's got ten. He's still got his red buff. He's still got Krugs to farm. Whereas for Wei. He's kind of sitting there with an empty bowl saying, can I have some more, please? What was that? Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist. I was like, I was like, that's not Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> no. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> what is like the literal set opposite? In industrial Britain, all right? That's where I was going. But we're going to look see where way he was going. He tries to maybe make something work in this top side. It's so difficult now because Ming's yeah. shown himself on this ward, didn't actually see it going over it, and now they know exactly where everyone is from this RNG bot duo, or the jungle duo. Now they know that Gala's in a little bit of trouble. He has flash, he has heal. He's just going to walk himself away. Will have a nice little cheeky ward to keep him safe, but now he's in a lot of trouble should he walk forward. There's no way this is... Like, what happened here? Like, I want to know what FPX had for breakfast because they've been looking absolutely incredible. And I want to know what RNG have been doing as well because this really feels like we haven't got to see RNG. They've gone for two drafts in a row. This NAR pick has been counters. We've had Wei, who hasn't been able to play through topside alongside Ming. Like, this is just RNG taking a completely different turn and not honestly playing their game at all. I don't think they've been allowed to, to be perfectly honest. Mm. I don't think it's been a, you know, I, I, I don't think it's been a uh, conscious choice from RNG to be able to say that they are not the ones to be able to take it. But now four plates here for Nuggery. He tries to be a nuisance in this top side. You do have the Bramble Vest and the Bambi Cinder, so it's actually relatively easy for the Orn to tank up this, but so difficult should he get ganked. Yeah, the big thing here, though, is that because we've got such a short-range composition coming through from RNG, Nuggery can go towards the Gore Drinker. So rather than going Stride Breaker to try and uh, get himself that bit more distance, get himself into these team fights and slowing people, RNG will be coming to him. So he's like, cool, I don't need this. I just want to be that drain tank and try and set up these fights perfectly for FPS. Oh, LWX. LWX might be in a lot of trouble here. They flash forward and he gets the buster shot, but the TPs are both being committed. Crisp is here, as is Ming. They're going to jump straight in on top of Kryon, but Nuggery is dead. Now Kryon with the Encore just forced the cleanse out of LWX. There's the Onslaught of Shadows as they get another TP in. It's the Seraphine for the Renekton. There is the TP right now for Xiaohu, so he cannot join this fight. Ends up going 2-1 to one in favor of FBX. And this is so good from FBX. They just know, hey, we have the TP advantage. If RNG commits, we just bring the cavalry, and there's nothing that can be done. Xiao Hu, wonderful. You got some turret plates. You're an Orn. No one gives a crap. So now FPX can turn towards Dragon. You've got all this gold that's invested onto Tien, in towards LWX. Like, I don't know. Things ain't looking so hot. I will, I will say, I don't think we could give Xiao Hu the you know, the, the business for uh, not having his teleport off. That's not no, really no, his no. fault. Yeah. So he only gets it up right now. Gets himself two turret plates or maybe three. I wasn't quite sure exactly where it started. But now Nuggery back on his top side, going to be able to push this one back in. Yep. And it's going to be a little bit of an upward climb here as we hit about a 2,000 gold lead and two dragons here for FBX. I mean, look, this is just smart from Nuggery. I'm assuming the Ornhorn came out to try and stop it. Yeah, he just spot him, but... Oh, no, Xiaohu, that's not it. He just said it was blind. It was blind. Again, I'm not going to give him the business because he was it trying his vicious, best. Isn't it? When you I don't it? believe so. Okay, anyway, uh, looking towards this FPX great call. Crisp as well. Beautiful flash, beautiful engage. All things pretty from FPX. And 
The Phoenix is burning bright in this game. Now, Tien is like, excuse me, Mr. Shao, who have you got a time to talk about how we're just going to take your tower right in front of your face? Honestly, the way things have gone, Shao Hu can kind of hold his head up high and say, you know what, I have my Sunfire. <laughs> That's pretty all right coming out of this laning phase, considering he had uh, two and a half thousand gold down. He's got these dragons. Like, I'm trying to look at silver linings <laughs> it's here. It's not even silver linings. This is like copper linings. <laughs> like, it's really like, cool, you can sell it for a tuppence, but it's not really going to go too far in the grand scheme of things. Look, we're talking about industrial England earlier on. <laughs> we're moving on. But here we go, coming into this as well. Two dragons now for FPX. Full control for Tien as well. He's been running amok in this early stages. And when you've got an Ocean Soul to play with as well, it feels like FPX have got their win condition laid out beautifully for them. We'll say, good Encore, good Call of the Forge God, either or. You're in a pretty decent spot. Ming goes in with the Pharomancy, but it's going to be knocked oh, up and taken no. down. Nowhere for him to go. And that's just an overextension, not getting the right combo and just being punished so heavily. Uh, this is worrying. I don't think RNG are uh, exactly keeping their held, head held up high for that Sunfire Cape in the top lane. It really does feel like they're just falling aside here. And look, Nuggery, solo on the Rift Herald. Full deep vision going into this bottom side for FPX. And they're going to be able to turn this over towards Terra in the bottom side. Like, you take mid tier, Nuggery comes to facilitate that mid push that RNG will have coming back out. And then you just shift across the map in towards bottom lane. But looks like actually Prime will be back here to try and defend. But FPX still get this Rift I still do, and I'm trying to be positive. It's not it's it's not in my disposition to be, you know, damning down people. I like an underdog story. I'm Irish. We're not good at anything. So whenever we do well, we're just like, woohoo, it's happy to be here. <laughs> but RNG are not happy to be here. And FBX, don't let do not let me take away from this. FBX have been exceptional. Like truly, truly exceptional. To the point where I was thinking, you know, it's gonna be a top esports we're looking good. EDG is still looking very good, but Chris, but he's on top of awards. There's nothing he can really do there. But this is this is a kind of a, a performance from a team that I would be very happy to put in and say they are title contenders. But I mean, look at the gold. Nuggery, Doomby, LWX. I mean, Gala, cool. You've managed to eke it back up, but that's the only person on RNG who's actually sitting there in the top. Now, that gold coming off that turret will do great. You do have the Kraken Slayer and the Serrated Dirk already done. You're very quickly getting that Q evolve for the Kaisa, but. Here we go. There we go, indeed. There is the Ornhorn Horn going to be used. Flash away there from Doom B as he tries to get himself away. He will be able to do it, but the crash down with the Magnet Storm able to do so, so much. Now you've got Gala finally joining in. Heals up way to keep him alive. Onslaught of Shadows right into the middle of the fray as we get FBX trying to turn this one back around. Tien will not die. Oh, Nuggery jumps straight back in. And now LWX flashing away, forces a flash from Xiaohu. And everybody else backs away. It's the support for your jungler, but you need the jungler for the dragon. There's so much healing that's going to be come out though with the double moon staff on the mid lane or at least moonstone I apologize on those mid laners there'll be a lot of wayward healing coming in and you can see there Tien trying to see if he could muscle up enough of that health bar to go for the engage but mid lane terror falls bot lane should fall to this rift herald as Nuguri will be able to collect that wave but the TP coming through from uh, crying though might actually be able to hold on to this should be able to get it. We don't have Flash, Dominus, or uh, Gore Drinker active right now for the Renekton, so gotta be a little bit more respectful. I was just about to say it as we go into a replay here. This is Xiaohu just trying to make something work, and RNG going one for one is not terrible. The big thing, though, is that the Flash is being burnt here, right? Because when we look towards that Dragon, which will be coming out after this replay, not having both those flashes makes things a lot easier. LWX also burnt his at the end of this fight. So at least for RNG, maybe X marks the spot now when it comes towards the crossing ultimates that can come through from Xiao Hu and from Cry. Very important to note as well, when we come out of this replay, Cryon has the Chemtech Future Fire, as does Doombi. So massive heat, Grievous Wounds, anti-heal coming in from both sides. You will be able to stop these big, big healings coming out from everyone on the solo lanes. Yeah, it's a classic heal, no heal. As <laughs> comes in with all these <laughs> kind of more supportive mid laners. Now though, Ming, or sorry, yeah, Ming trying to see if he can clear out this vision. I, I'm really struggling because both Chris and Ming have been the two premier rel players, so my brain's a little funky when it comes <laughs> to this, but Ming now could get a big engage into towards this pit. No flash, though. A lot of flashes down. Almost all flashes down, but there's the Encore. Lands onto three, and Tristana is dead. There's the Ornhorn Horn right on top of Nuggery, and he's dead, too. Double kill going over to the side of RNG, and the crowd goes wild. They are not dead yet. They are still in this game. They at least have struck the chest. 
That X marks the spot now, giving a nice thud and some little bit of gold back in favor of RNG, but they are well and truly far away from actually being able to get the treasure that is the victory here. And now they will be able to push in towards this mid lane. They might be able to get some pressure down in the spot lane. And for FPX, it is a rude awakening saying you're not out of the woods yet. Yes, Nuggery is big, but those Gore Drinker nerfs hurt. When you're not able to get that one out, the extra little bit of healing. Let's have a look at what's going. This is a crying perfectly positioned to be able to just run it through everybody. Yeah, but it's Way here as well, right? Way is wading back and forth. He's basically coming through with that extra range. And LWX well, tried. He had the cleanse. But unfortunately for him, there's just too many people coming out of the woodwork on RNG's side. You get that big magnet storm on towards Nuggery as well, so he's not able to get as much healing off his like, especially with that uh, Chemtech Breach Fire that you already called out. So not the best of fights for FPX. It felt like a lot of things went wayward, and now RNG, they're kind of back into it. I mean, look at Gala. He's got the Kraken Slayer Collector completed. Like, he's actually in a really strong spot, a full item essentially ahead of his counterpart in LWX. We'll be able to figure out the third and final outer down in this bot side that we'll go over to Nuguri as he goes 0, 2, and 3. Not having the same amount of impact as we saw in the previous two games. And FBX just owning this bot side of the jungle right now. But RNG, they can feel it. They're kinda, the momentum behind them is very much there. It's, my eyes are squared firmly onto Gala. If Gala dies in any of these fights, you have no damage on Orange. But it's the same on the opposite side, right? It's what we just saw. LWX goes in that little bit too far and uh, ends up costing FPX the fight. Now, with RNG loving the fact Sorry, that they get time I got on top really of taken aback by the random. Ah. Oh, okay. I was like, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I thought Jamie the other side. Yeah, I thought Jamie, your sound guy, was just messing with yeah. me. <laughs> As a guy from the north of England, I would have been impressed if he could have hit those notes. But <laughs> He's a sound engineer. I don't know his True. magic. <laughs> Either way, though, I'm looking at this bottom side. Jungle very much in favor of uh, RNG. And this is where RNG start to have a lot more fun with it when they're able to get this deep vision, where they're able to play the map, play off these side lanes. And FEX now, they kind of gave away the massive tempo advantage that they had. This game is no longer feeling as fast and as furious as we saw in game one and game two. So maybe, maybe RNG can slow down this pace and find their moment in the sun. Speaking of finding their moment, Gala might be getting jumped on here. Tien is on the backside. Flash from Gala to keep himself alive. There's the Onslaught of Shadows to try and keep everyone away. There's completely whiff off of the Encore, but look at LWX off to the side. He's trying to do damage, he jumps in, but he gets straight away caught out. And you can see Crying trying to go in, but they've caught out as many as there. It's just Gala left in this fight, and it's FBX with a triple kill for their AD carry. And they find the fight and they push for Baron. That could be everything. FBX can take the Baron, they can take these sidelines, they've taken control of this game, Penguin. Or NG have been quelled when they came in first in the regular split, and but FPX's rise to the stars will not be stopped. It gets FPX their foot in the door, and now it's on RNG's RNG to stop that momentum and slam it back out because FBX are in the driver's seat. They will pick themselves up. The Baron, that will be on all five members. A minute and a half until Dragon. Perfect time for reset. Get themselves some gold. But look at this. They try to go all in on Gala. Gala burns everything. And then LWX is free hitting. And look at that from Tia. You beautifully sidesteps me finds the big onslaught of shadows. And I'm looking at Gala in this fight. I'm like, Gala's got it, Gala's got it. But look, as you said, LWX free hitting this whole time, playing beautifully around the cooldowns that are coming in from the realm, knowing there's nothing that can shut him down. And he pops off. And now this series is starting to feel like a culmination of everything we've talked about for FPX. The fastest Phoenix, the bloodiest Phoenix. TN time is in prime time right now. And FPX are putting on a sublime show for us. RNG still have opportunities, but it's becoming so much more difficult. You've got two level lead now for Nuguri over Xiaohu, a level lead for Tien over Wei. So these aren't even fair smite fights either. And it feels like as soon as this last whisper, or the Lord Dominic, sorry, comes in from LWX, it's out. Like, Xiaohu won't be tanky enough to try and deal with it. He's going to be dealing so much damage to the front line of RNG as well. And if he even gets a look at Gala or Cryon, they are donezo. See, Tien just hovering. 
making sure there's no funny business here as Nuggetry finds himself underneath this tower. He has nothing to really be afraid of as the rest of RNG were starting to reset. Important to note, you now have the Phantom Dancer finished up here for Gala. You are still a little bit ahead if you can get this fight going for you, but you can see here, good wards here from RNG, <laughs> keeping them safe in their own jungle. You can't contest. FPX burst this down, full control of this bot side jungle. And now you're looking at I'm real uphill battle. Five minutes until this Ocean Dragon. Now, maybe RNG looking for the pick, but you have Nuggeri. all five members of FPX. Nuggeri. Nuggeri is caught out by Wei, but is it going to be the fight now? As you can see, LBX has to flash himself out. They do get the lockdown, but they have no extra damage. As you can see, Ming is gone down. The Encore is here. Here's Nuggeri. Nuggeri flash forward, gets himself right on top of the damage. Gala trying his very best to keep himself alive, but you cannot get away from Nuggeri. The World Championship top laner with the 2019 World Championship team will melt RNG. 3-0 to zero on the day. FBX going to the winner's final. It's yippee ki -yay for FPX as they soar in onto RNG. They will close this game out in three to zero. The reset comes in for the teleport onto the minions for Nuggery. If they're not on your top of your power rankings that before this, they should be now. The first Nexus turret does fall. Ming, valiant effort, but there's just nothing you can do to stop the freight train that is this Phoenix. FBX, three to nothing over RNG, and they will go to the winner's finals. What a performance from FPX. We talked about them having this early game engine where they could power through Doombi and Tien, but this game, they mixed it up. They decided to play off of their lane states with Tien masterfully invading to shut down Wei, to take every advantage that they were given and run away with a 3-0 victory against RNG. Doubters be silenced. What a statement. What a way to come into this. You started from round two. They've had the most